Water embraces everything, is in and all through everything. It is a universal element shared between animals, plants, and people. It's self-undetermined, yet determining. Because like the primal mother it is, it supplies the essence of life to everything living. I honestly believe we can influence the health of our most precious resource simply by working together for the best possible outcomes for the entire Klamath River Basin. So let us celebrate ourselves and the good work that is being done. Let us celebrate our watershed and the communities within it. And let us celebrate our water. <laughs> and back. That's what we've been through, trying to bring a huge political system to a human level. That's our task. I am glad to be here, excited to be here, a little, feel a little anxiety because back when we were fighting you could barely get three of us together in a room. Any time spent acquiring, maintaining, or provoking enemies is time wasted in your life that you will never get back. The people you exclude today can be the ones that stop you cold tomorrow. I chose my community, a phenomenal community, a rich and warm and giving and caring community, a place that I call home and my children call home. And what I've discovered through this process is my community is much larger. My community goes now down to the Pacific Ocean and up past Becky's home and everywhere in between. We need our own plane and our own pilot standing by so we can fly back and forth anytime we want to to visit each other. These communities are complex and they need to be respected. And so you need to put the resources necessary to deal with those d dynamics in those communities and make it part of this planning process. You can't do much for fish and wildlife if you can't work with people. The status of fish in this basin is not good. It is a reasonable assumption that the improvement of habitat will improve fish numbers and that that will improve the status of human communities. Keep records, monitor, learn from those records, share our results, adjust our methods, keep doing it. Communities throughout the basin are in trouble. We need stability for our communities in this basin from top to bottom. Restoration would not happen in these areas without landowners getting involved, but also funding. You know, landowners do not have the funds available to do what needs to be done. Riparian fencing, you know, $7,000 a mile now. Landowners don't have that kind of funds available. Looking at the diversity of all the projects that are being done on the Klamath shows you that people do care. If I could have two things to make restoration easier, um, money, <laughs> um, you know, we have plans. We need to implement, and, and we need not only money for implementation, but as the scientists said, money for monitoring. We feel your pain, do you feel ours? Several farming communities in our area are in high, high poverty rates. We strongly support the habitat restoration efforts in the Scott and the Shasta. There is right now $7,235,000 in construction ready projects ready in the Scott Valley and we're waiting to just add money and shake. We need to work toward taking advantage of opportunities to make things better for us all. Let's put people at work restoring the fishery. We've spent years saying Go get a college education and make something of yourself with the underlying message that because you can't do it if you stay here. And so we are now seeing the just rewards of that. Um, our children are leaving and people feel like the industries are dead. And I'm here to say it's not so. Go get that college education and get your butts back here because we need your help figuring this stuff out.
conference is a wonderful opportunity for everyone to work together. I see the ranchers and the Indians sitting around joking and talking together. I see displays that everyone is trying to move forward. Every single watershed has restoration projects, has positive impact that they are trying to make. NRCS has a program called the Environmental Quality Incentive Program. And this is an example of some restoration work we did with a rancher. And what this landowner did was he collaborated with California Conservation Corps, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, um, and a nonprofit group out of the Del Nort, of Del Nort County, and us, and did a bunch of restoration work. This part of the presentation is about fishing families and uh, the kind of work that we do on the ocean when we're out fishing for salmon with hook and line. Salmon fishing was closed this last year for 700 miles of the coastline based on returns to the Klamath River. And we came here to share stories about our fishery with people from the upper basin and about restoration work that we do as well. This display was actually made in the, in the 90s when we were reeling from the decrease of fishing availability in Humboldt County. And, uh, but we focused on the salmon industry as, as a whole, in, including the tribes and, and the sports and the river. And, and we also focused on the education and restoration um, that we uh, were and continue to be invested in as the salmon industry. The Kaduk people, we manage for traditional foods, and that's our uh, socioeconomics in the basin. Um, so it's about food in our children's bellies, it's about um, a way of life, a culture, and, and a specific lifestyle that I think everybody in the basin uh, relates to. You know, So I think that um, we have a lot to offer uh, this process and we look forward to working with a lot of different people. And again, our restoration efforts are really obvious. You know, th At the end of the day, what we really want to do is we want to rejuvenate the fishery. You know, and again, you know, the fishery is very much a part of our culture. And right here is a world renewal ceremony in Picky Uh That's a white deerskin dance. And that's held at Kudimine and um, the center of our world. And this is the center of the world is our fishery also. And so what are the big problems in the basin right now? There's lack of water, lack of good water. And what that causes is blue-green algae. And that is a very important part of our world because um, that, that is very critical because um, during the summer when the water quality is its most volatile uh, uh, condition, we have our ceremonies in the Klamath River Basin. And, and basically what that means is our medicine man goes in and bathes in the Klamath River up to 10 days in a stretch. He'll bathe three to four times a day up to 10 days. So there's some, some huge health issues that, uh, that, that occur to our people when we're practicing our ceremonies. My name is Mark Stern. I work with the Nature Conservancy in the Klamath Basin. And we've been involved in a project at the Williamson River Delta for the last 10 years. And it involves restoration of about 5,600 acres of wetland to benefit some of the endangered fish. And I don't know if you can see it on the map over here, but this is where the Williamson River comes through the delta and comes into Upper Klamath Lake and that's been an important site because the adult suckers go up the river, they spawn below the Chiloquin Dam and then the young fish come down and are flushed into the lake. So our effort's been to restore some of that habitat for larval and juvenile fish over the last five to ten years. In the Upper Williamson mainly what our organization has been doing is watershed assessment. Um, it covers the upper portion of the, effect of the watershed, the Williamson, um, up to the headwaters. It involves local landowners and the community and stakeholders and scientists trying to figure out what the available science tells us about conditions, what the problems might be, what the good conditions might be, and most of all, what action we can take to try and resolve some issues in that area. We represent the uh, Trinity River Subbasin. Uh, the Trinity River is the largest tributary to the Klamath River. One of the interesting things we've worked on recently is uh, reestablishing reestablishing some wetlands um, just outside uh, Weaverville itself in a partnership with the Natural Resource Conservation Service and um, the county. So these are reestablished four ponds out there so that's up and running and doing really well. 
And one of our newest projects is the Community Forest, which is a stewardship project with the Bureau of Land Management. This has basically an overview of all of our programs. Um, we have a, a native plant program that is tied to our noxious weed program. And basically we have a, a demonstration garden located at the Krug Department of Natural Resources in Orleans where we uh, have a demonstration of a, a fire safe uh, garden that uses not very much water with native plants. Um, and on the other side of that we uh, are modeling various uh, innovative techniques of how to identify, monitor, and control noxious weeds along the mid Klamath. We are a very diverse watershed and we have a lot of things going. Some of the things that we have going are our fish research, we have direct observation, um, looking at juvenile rearing habitat, we've been doing a lot of research on juvenile habitat rearing. Uh, we work with fish and game on their rotary screw trap, uh, trapping and monitoring outward migration our habitat dives and our carcass surveys. On our direct observation we have a video for 12 minutes of summer rearing of juvenile habitat. It is an awesome video um, that uh, really shows how many juvenile coho we have in the Scott Valley. Uh, wonderful program and as you can see there are a lot and we're very excited how we're finding them and we're looking at the types of habitat that the coho like, where they like to rear. As you know, the coho like to stay in the watershed for up to a year before they migrate out. And so making sure that we have good habitat for them to rear in is very important. A lot of needs I think we have in our watershed is uh, the need to have more of a stakeholder involvement in the decision making process involved in um, creating policies and so that's why I think this conference today is really vital in terms of trying to, as stakeholders of one basin, bring the stakeholders together and be able to say this is what we want and bring it up to the politicians and say here we are, a diverse group of people all saying one thing and so please do what we're doing. We want them to, want them to uh, give us money because we know we know what the problems are. And if we don't know what the problems are, we know what's needed to be done to find out what the problems are. And I think without, uh, without the stakeholders' input at higher levels of our government to direct where, where funding needs to go, then uh, funding really doesn't get placed in the right spot. Then we've made big strides in our watershed probably over the past year. And, and it's really exciting to see the amount of landowner participation that's really coming forward. I think the landowners in our, in our watershed, and I don't want to speak for them, but my observation of, of what they're going through is that they're, they're realizing they need to take a proactive step or else the regulations and the regulatory folks are going to tell them what needs to be done. And so they're, they're saying, let's step forward and, and help work through this process and do this before we're required to. Everyone is working together, and together all of these little pieces are going to make a difference, and I believe that very firmly.